Yes, hello, and welcome to Release the Creative, your favorite podcast about creativity, cognition, and this week, where are we going and what's with the handbasket? I feel like I should know the answer to this. Well, no, I just, there's, there's like, I was raised by my dad, and I think that it's like a standard 80s dad's joke, but I don't know that it was one that your dad would have told. But is the, like, you know, we're going to hell in a handbasket? You're familiar well, with the I'm, phrase? I'm familiar with the phrase. I'm not really familiar with the dad joke version of it. But just like, you know, we're going to hell in a handbasket here. So where are we going and, and what's, what, what's with the handbasket? Uh, for all of 2020, people have been like, oh my gosh, 2020 is a dumpster fire. 2020 is coming to an end. It's, you know, 2021 is our year. But as we talked last week, there's no indication that 2021 is not just going to be a smoldering mess of a dumpster fire. Yeah, I mean, we're all still alive, so that's plus one point. Everyone listening, yes. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's one of those self-proving points. If you can hear me, yes. But, you know, we talked that we don't really do New Year's resolutions per se, but having a, a destination, like, I, I don't want to say, like, I'm not a defeatist. Well, 2021 is going to suck, too. Screw you. Knowing that there's a, a, an intention to it, a goal, where am I going? And why do I have a handbasket? Like, <laughs> I, it's fine that you're headed to hell. What is in the handbasket and, and why? Why do you have a handbasket? Well, yeah, goals are goals are good. You um, you were with me. Uh, was it five weeks ago? We went to Home Depot uh, and we, we we were there for work. But then I picked up some personal items, too. You remember right? it was the Springfield Home Depot, not the Woodbridge Home Depot. So, yeah, it was it. Oh, it was pre Black Friday. It was before before it, Thanksgiving. No, it. Yes, yeah, it was okay. the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving, yeah, and, and I got some, uh, I got some wall patches and yeah. uh, some spackle and just a couple oh, of minor, these pants. a minor uh, home, home repair. I remember, we picked out the paint color, yeah. for the uh, the downstairs bathroom. We, I do. So anyway, um, those items came from the car to my house the day before Christmas. Um, so they've just been kind of living in my uh, in my car since then. So so. We went, we had a checklist, we bought all of the items on the checklist, which then lived in your car for a month. Yeah, providing traction should it snow, which did not, so that really didn't go anywhere. Um, and I feel that that was a, like, revisionist, like, that's why they were there, when really they weren't. <laughs> that's, that wasn't like, you didn't think that well, through. Well, there's, there's uh, cheaper ways to weigh your car down than paint, yes. Um, yeah, but, uh, kitty litter. But yeah, no, in terms of 2021, I guess, uh, I guess I don't, don't, uh, wasn't supposed to be a 2021 plan, but maybe, uh, you know, working on the downstairs bathroom is now my 2021 plan by ha default. Having lived in your basement for many, many months, not recently, just at it throughout our relationship, having lived in your basement. Yeah. So, you know, sussing up the, uh, the downstairs bathroom is a, you know, solid goal. Laudable goal. Yeah. It's a laudable goal. No. And goals are are one of those funny things that. It's it's always good to have good intentions, but just because you like walk into a situation like. I went into Home Depot, I had the list. Just because you have good intentions doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get anywhere near the goal that you you wanted. Yeah, so the problem here is there was too many intentions. Maybe we we bought items for like six different mini projects. Absolutely, we and, did. And uh, probably if I had bought like one thing, I would have gone home and done it. But it, it's it's like, well, which thing do I do? The answer was none. <laughs> well, and it's funny, you know, th this is kind of off script ish, but like we we've talked a lot at the beginning of covid. We were a, you know, five, six person company. And, and at the end of covid, middle of covid, we became a two person company. And when we were a six person company, we were already doing two to three jobs each. And now you and I are doing like eight to 12 jobs each. So like we'll come in like I have so much to do. You know what I should do? None of it kind of applies to to everything in life. Uh, you know, just everything you need to do during the day. If. If it's if it's only if there's only one choice, right. that's easy. Right. If there are two choices, I'm going to think about it. If there's like eight ways to do something, right. You know what? I'm going to find something else to do. <laughs> and 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 here that's interesting. So now let's even boil that down. So that's when we have a hundred different things. And I like that you brought up uh, you brought up uh, marketing. Oh, marketing. You, you brought up marketing. I said a uh, lot of things. So so there was so there's a customer. So now it's not just you in an empty bathroom. Do I spackle or paint or the toilet or like? Now it's a the goal involves another person. And so, and, and like you said, anytime you make someone choose between two things, one of those choices could be leaving. Do you remember the seminal 1990s classic uh, Wings? Wings, yeah, with um, Tony Shalhoub and yes. um, 
uh, everyone in that show has a name that I know, but that's the yeah. First so one that comes it to was mind. it was uh, Tim Daly who went on to be do great. You do great things in uh, private practice, but his show Eyes was way better. It lasted eight episodes. Its cancellation literally broke my heart, but that's a different conversation. Uh, Stephen Weber who went on that's to right. do, do unbelievable things on many many shows, but like like Wings, uh, Tony Shalhoub that very few people knew before Wings. Uh, and then I, his name is Neil on the show. He's gone on to win an Oscar for Sideways, and I can't remember his name, and I feel like a jerk. <laughs> Lloyd. His name's Lloyd. What cinematic television universe was Wings part of? Did it break off of Frasier or Empty Nest? It, it belonged I, to something. I don't think it? so. I, it was. It, there was. It had crossovers. Let me put it that way. Did it? Okay. Characters from other shows came onto it, and I don't know who they were. I I did not know that. I just know that I have always had a a semi affinity for the lineup of USA Television. USA has just a <laughs> a palette that I find particularly uh wings fits in very nicely there no i i saw wings in its original run like too. when when was that the late 80s or early 90s i think if i had to guess right now i would tell you it was on the air from like 92 to 97 yeah. i'm gonna google this in a minute and be close to I, on I, I think that's about right yeah. i i think it was probably it was early 90s through i think it was kind of sunsetting when we were in high school yeah but like you could still very much see it on usa when we were in high school anyway i was a big wings fan and for those of you who don't know which is to say everyone younger than us <laughs> like uh it 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 had two brothers uh brian and joe played by tim daly and steven weber and uh tim daly uh joe's character had a girlfriend helen and helen owned the diner in the airport they were both pilots lots of convolution here but the important thing to know is that helen was awesome and young and tiny and pretty but the whole joke was that in her youth she had been very very big she'd been a very heavy girl it's a very much monica and friends it's a joke say that's a friends thing too <laughs> it, it's a joke they tell often throughout the show that helen lost like a ton of weight to be this young pretty you know thin thin woman now and helen and jo uh, helen and joe kind of have this on again off again kind of ross and rachel sort mm -hmm. of thing going on and uh and when they're first kind of getting together, Joe wants to do a really special first Valentine's Day. And so he goes out and gets her like two and a half pounds of like the finest Swiss chocolates or something. I'm this is 20 years ago that I'm remembering now. And he brings it uh, brings it to her and she opens it and she gets angry and she throws him against the, and she just storms out. And later, Joe is talking to Brian and Brian's the irresponsible one. Wow. I'm like digging deep here, but deep into wings lore. Hey, man, like. I tweeted at Steven Weber once and he responded. I'm just throwing that out there. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's true. It happened. So. So Joe is bemoaning to, to his brother, Brian. He's like, I don't understand. I did everything right. I didn't forget Valentine's Day. I didn't forget this. I, I made reservations. I did all of the things you're supposed to do. I did every good boyfriend move. I even got her the really expensive chocolates. And Brian goes, really? You, you got her? The chocolates. He's like, yeah, the big box, the more expensive. He's like, buying two and a half pounds of chocolates for, to a woman who's had a weight problem ever since she started solid foods. Nope, that couldn't be it. Um, <laughs> and Joe's like, oh, geez. Because as good intentioned as you want to be, as checklisty as you want to be, you lose control of the message the minute you send it. Mm -hmm. And then it is all about your understanding and the perception and the reception of your audience. And in this one, they'd been friends for years. They'd been dating for a while. And he just, he lost track of a factor. And so you brought home too much to do and didn't know which to choose. And that didn't even have another audience member. Now pick, now say, add an audience member to it. Now you have, did you do it right? Now you have, did you do it the, the right one first? Mm -hmm. Now you have all these other factors. And so it becomes, there's an infinite number of options of how to do it. And then you add an audience member to it and they get a vote <laughs> and it gets very complex very quickly. So is this a, uh, a communications issue or is this a motivation issue? Like, what are we, what are we talking about here? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, the best way to put it for me is, you know, if we've talked, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, we talk about knowledge, abilities and behaviors, and we talk about different communication rubrics and, and, and ways to do it. But, one of the ones that I like to use, which is my favorite, isn't even a communications paradigm ish. It it was it's taught by uh, Sean Ellis, who kind of invented um, growth hacking and the term growth hacking. He wrote the book Hacking Growth and Subtle Flex. You know, uh, Sean Ellis, he endorsed my book because he's a really cool guy. And I sent it out to him and he was like, yeah, I read it and liked it. Cool. He talks a lot about and his, he's not a communicator. He is. Well, he is. He's a marketing guy, but 
he likes to look at the kind of the whole business the the whole business spectrum the mm-hmm. the the whole all of the moving pieces not just advertising but you know the website the website experience the everything and he talks about how everything needs to be aimed at a a north star metric now i literally could he did write a book about it i talked about his book in my book i could do a whole podcast on this concept but to save us all from that i'll say that there needs to be a driving force and a purpose there needs Intention is good. Intention is vital, but all of the pieces have to be pointed at something. And if they're not, it's never going to get there. So in this particular example with Brian and Joe, he did everything right, but he missed the audience. Even though his thing didn't work, everything he did correctly, he just didn't gauge the audience correctly. He did, but all the steps were right. So this reminds me of uh, you I just mean, not for his audience. They were all right for. Yeah, you have. Uh, you've told me multiple stories about um, time. We we always say like when when we start with a new client, you know, what's your goal? And mm-hmm. and they always they always come back with something. Oh, to make a video. That's not a goal. That's not a goal. <laughs> um, or or you know, that's like, our goal. To, yeah, to to make money. It's like that's a result. That's a result. Not the goal. Um, if you want to make money panhandling is the most direct way to do it. Absolutely. Or a printer. But they, they don't appreciate that advice. Uh, like, seriously, the number of times I've, I've, I've given people advice on the right laser printer for making money, like, geez, don't ask a question if you don't want the answer. But yeah, when you say North Star, uh, you always got to kind of train your client to, to understand what a North Star is. Mm-hmm. And, and so, like, uh, a lot of times they interpret a lot of the steps that should be taken to get to the North Star as, as the North Star. Right. Um, so yeah, I can't remember now. You, you told me so many times where, where you've had a, a client that was thinking you were going one direction and you were going another. Right. And, and it's a real problem. It's, and it's not just because it's a real problem in general, because, uh, the number of times, because there's, like I said, I really like the wheel and spoke analogy. They're all part of the same entity and they're all moving in the same direction, but they're all doing very different things. Mm-hmm. So f- a perfect example of this is many years ago, I was working with a client in the nonprofit space and it was a very large nonprofit in the um, animal life forestry type kind of environment, envi- 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 environmentalism. Yes. <laughs> and they came to us with a very particular plight of a very particular issue. Uh, and so we, I was, I was on a team. This wasn't like a, and I was a college student. No, this was a team. There were, there were interns. There were, this was a full fledged team of marketers all working for a large two comma, you know, endowment environmental lobby. Uh, and we worked for months and months and months building this, this campaign that every time we talked about the, the KPIs, uh, key performance indicators that for those that aren't nerds, um, every single time that we talked about the KPIs, we were talking about engagement we were talking about awareness we were talking about involvement mm-hmm. we were in talking about all of these things that and we even talked about getting people out of their chairs getting people out of their houses getting people out you know it's like getting people out to vote we were talking all about getting people to alter their actions and their behaviors and we are two weeks out we are two weeks out and the executive director is just beaming at all of our comps and all of our things. He's like, this looks so great. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what this has done to all of our fundraising and donations next year. And all of us, for those of you just listening to the podcast and not looking at my face, where eyes just kind of went wide and kind of were like, sir, like nothing. I mean, you could get lucky. Incidentally. Uh, like, I mean, but, but not a single call to action that we have crafted none of the audience journeys none of this is this is quite literally we knew that we were talking about a woman who wasn't going to like chocolates we went out of our way we did research on the everything and we knew who we were talking to we knew what we were asking them to do and the entire campaign had been drilled down to the nth degree to get a very very specific type of person to do a very very specific type of action and that was get involved and he's like well no i mean for the we say get involved, but most people are just going to write a check. I'm like, not the people that we are. We didn't just do the messaging. We did the channel mapping. We did the journey. We yeah, did the audience. Know like, who you're talking to. We didn't just craft the message. We, what you're we crafted the messengers. We crafted the channels. We crafted the everything. Yes, there are people that are going to send five bucks. But if we had wanted to, you know, attract Bruce Wayne's friends, 
if you get that subtle reference. If we were trying to, <laughs> that is a very different message along very different channels. And it's very, it's less emotional wording. It's more pragmatic wording. It's more tax write-off wording. There's an entirely different cognitive process to getting rich, rich people to donate large amounts of money than there is to get poor college students to come out and volunteer. It's not the same group. It, it, it's just fundamentally different. Like what happened there? <laughs> Oh, I, I thought we all agreed. I thought we all knew that money was the point, which, no. For the record, this one, we have on pretty solid sense. The, the entire wheel, even his staff, had no idea that that was what was going on <laughs> in his head. Yeah. So this was a tragic failing, and I'm really not pointing at anyone, but this was a tragic failing of communication, says the professional communicator, because the executive director of this nonprofit literally had shared with no one on his staff or ours what his goal actually was yeah it uh it just reminds me of um like in that case well one one very important key person had a very different idea in his head from everyone else the but, key person the hub of the wheel yeah and that that's more of a uh a communication issue where mm -hmm. the, the, the right things were not being communicated um but the, the whole thing also reminds me of what we just went through here uh last month in december you'll recall we had this big web conference that we did absolutely and it, it was a um a, lo a lot this was this was kind of new for us in that a lot sure. of conferences want to be spread as far and wide as possible oh and they want yeah they, they want as many people to see it as possible yep this was this is in a um an industry that deals with security and uh, you know they they wanted specific people to see it and no one else and they didn't and only those people to have access and not their their cubicle mate couldn't share their login and yeah, yeah so there was a lot of um and and so this was a we did this in december we started talking with this client in the, the spring like this was a year long yeah it was, a, it was a way out a long ways back and and so we she did know all her goals she did communicate them to us absolutely and this was not a communication problem it was an issue of when we got into the the nitty-gritty planning over the summer so you know we're we're Establishing well, here's the platforms we're going to use. Here's the software we're going to use and as usual. We're trying to be our, our normal helpful selves We're given, we kept trying to throw in bells and whistles. We, like, got a lot we of, can do this. We had a lot of options We was like we can do this thing. We can do this thing and Got her hand slapped. She kept shooting them down to say well. No, we can't have in uh, In web chat no chat because these people we They need the ability to log in and watch what we're doing and not have other people know that they're there Right. And just, oh, okay. So like, no, no chatting, and 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 okay, cool. No, no chat window. Uh, but then over here it says how many people are watching. She's like, we don't even want them to know how many right. how many people are watching. And so, this turned into like a, we were able to accomplish every single one of her goals. But from our point of view, they were all backwards. We're they like, were, we're we're trying to communicate to fewer people in a more locked down manner. And like like this goes against everything that we've ever everything done. Everything we've ever done. Like that I remember the first the rough draft of the they so they needed a custom website without custom website money. For those of you who are in the industry, you understand what custom website money looks like. It 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 has five or six digits in the amount and and there was not that kind of money in the website portion of yeah. of and of this. just jump ahead to the end of the story. We did it. We, we absolutely we gave we, them exactly what they wanted on their budget. And like, I'm really proud of that. But our North Star and her North Star were not the same. We're not the same. And it took, at first. It, it, yeah, no, we got there uh, when plenty of time to do it all. But it was I said, we've been working on this all year. The first three months were aligning those two North Stars. Yeah. And because I mean, time every client that has ever called us. Mostly because of it's it's our battle cry. Every client that has ever called us has done it because I want to see the most the most number the the highest number of engagement, the highest amount of involvement, the highest amount of donations with the least amount of budget. And we're like, right. And we have to explain to them reasonable expectations. This woman uh, who we had it was a great conference came to us with like, right. I want a very specific number of people no more <laughs> with a very specific title and list only they can know about it no one else can get into it the re the we have to lock down registration at a set time no one can get in that isn't invited and when someone comes in i don't want them to be able to see if three people or 300 people or 3000 people are watching and the problem is without custom money we're building a lot of we're using a lot of tools off the shelf you know vimeo or youtube or like we're using a lot of pre-built widgets and things and almost all of those are built with, with the, our the kind opposite of, opposite goals in mind yeah so so it was a really interesting uh exercise with this client of of how do we give her what she wants which is the quite literal opposite of 
anything anyone in the history of doing a conference has wanted. I'm sure someone else has wanted this, but no, to, to, to us, it was new and it was, uh, yeah. I would say that it was a very fun challenge once we knew what we were trying to do. Absolutely. But it was, yeah, it was difficult to come up with that, uh, that <laughs> menu of, uh, here, well, the, the North star, it, you know, we, we didn't understand her North star at all. And once we did, we, we did a great job on it. it and it really did to, I like we, our first meeting was with me and it went really, really well. And like, we thought everything was going great. And we like, we kicked it off. I, you know, we had such high alignment. We thought our personalities meshed. And even when we got the contract, she's like, you know, we had a lot of bids and a lot of proposals. And I think a lot of them were a little bit bigger companies or bigger things, but I wanted to go with you guys because I want to go with the people that I trust. And I think get it. And we were like, we felt the same way. There was such high alignment and we started getting her our comps and our, our, our kind of rough builds. And all of a sudden she was like, I, I, I thought we understood each other. And I was like, so did I like, this is everything we discussed. She's like, no, like they're going to have chat and they're going to have this and they're have this. I was like, right. Well, these are just, these are pre-built kind of tools. And, and it was one, aligning our abilities to her North star was very doable, but her assumption that we understood her goal and our assumption that she was wanting what everybody wants was wrong. And it took us several weeks of going back and forth to realize that we were both aiming at the wrong goal for well, that, her and vice versa. That's uh, I mean, this was a big months long thing, yeah, but yeah, but the uh, the kind of lesson there is can be boiled down to anything you do is is that that job got way easier once we knew what we were trying to do. And they, right. that sounds obvious, but every little thing you do during the day um, can be broken down into that. Right. Listen, really, it's that like if you have laid out, here's what my goal is. Then, I mean, that's what you've always said about um, with the, the build a better mousetrap doesn't tell you anything, anything. And, and, and that you usually say that as a communicating to someone else is kind of how you sure. tell that story is like, don't don't, uh, you know, communicate with the people you're trying to work with. But I'd say you turn it back. It's uh, it's more of an internal thing. It's like, here's here's where I want to be at the end of the day. Now I can think creatively, creatively about how to get there. And, and, and to that exact point, like my whole, you know, for those that haven't heard my build a better mousetrap thing, I could go on for two hours, but I'm not going to, I'm going to give it in two seconds is that when you say it's the rallied cry of the entrepreneur, you know, we need to build a better mousetrap because a misquoted Emerson quote, which says, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will pound a path to your door. But the problem is build means something better me uh, is a baseline mousetrap is a thing. But if the actual goal is to get rid of mice, a mousetrap actually lures them in the the stated objective and the tool are actually at direct odds with each other. So if I can manage to scare all mice away that you will never see another mouse ever. And you were measuring how many mice I caught. We are now at complete odds. I've 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 accomplished the objective, but the, the to your point, one of my biggest problems is not communicating externally is communicating internally. Your boss says to you, or you're like, okay, we have this huge mouse problem. How do I catch more mice? How do I catch more mice? And we sit down and we drive down. How do I catch more mice? And the problem is we started at the wrong point because to get rid of mice, you don't want a mouse trap. You want a mouse deterrent. Yeah. A mouse. Well, a mouse trap could conceivably be needed by someone who, yes, like you said, wants to collect mice or wants there to be no more mice. No kid and shaming, whatever. B both of those people have drastically different goals. Right. Um, so a place that that uh, really came into sharp focus in history. I don't remember. I don't know if this is like 1890 or 1940. I, I don't remember when this was. It's a big discrepancy there. Well, it's it's the British in India. Okay. Um, and at some point there was a, you, I'm sure you've heard this one. But I think you told it on the podcast, but tell it again. Well, it's the... Um, I feel like this is more of a lunch conversation, but it was the, the British needed. There was a snake problem. Sure. There was I don't know if they were cobras or whatever, but there was yeah. a lot more snakes than usual this and year. Indi and uh, England, who lives in the dreary, cold north, is not used to a. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were like, we got to get rid of these snakes. And so they came up with a, um, a, a bounty. They, they said, we will pay you to bring us dead snakes, which for the first week worked great. They killed a lot of snakes. But <laughs> then when there was fewer snakes, people started breeding snakes in order to come sell them to the British. And so breeding snakes was the quite exact opposite of what they were going for. But that's what their request uh, made happen. They, yeah, they 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 put out a bounty for dead snakes. And now people that were having trouble struggling, having trouble 
feeding themselves or just looking for a good side hustle realized that they could uh, they could they could you know pick up some cobra hubs husbandry and and make a pretty penny and that is at direct odds with this with the stated objective was fulfilled but the actual objective was not and so all the way back to my my nonprofit our goal our goal was to get as we had been told was to get 19 to 25 year olds that were otherwise doing nothing to come out and volunteer and engage and share click link tell people we wanted to make this something that people just knew was happening and the the executive director just assumed that that was going to immediately trickle to their rich parents checkbook which that's a false assumption that's not cognitively that doesn't make any sense um yeah cognitively that makes no sense the audience for that is completely different the objective for there is actually not the same we were and so we had built this whole thing and he'd loved it but in his brain these goals were going to serve this other end just just automatically if we catch more mice there will be less mice and that's not true if we catch more mice that actually means means there's more mice <laughs> uh so the the real point in all of this is whether you're giving chocolates to your girlfriend or you're making a uh making getting chocolates for your girlfriend or you're making a um a campaign to raise awareness or fundraising or you're trying to get you know a uh you know snakes out of your backyard in india the wording of the request really super matters because they didn't want dead snakes they wanted less snakes build a better mousetrap doesn't tell me what the goal is it assumes that i know and so you want to you want to do that internally too right which uh yeah brings brings us all the way back to uh i know you've mentioned before what people call the secret and i know there's like a lot of variations on that and sure. so, some people view it as a psychological hack other people view it as mysticism or, or prayer sure uh but at the end of the day the the idea of literally tell yourself what you want right like it, that is shortcutting this whole process well and the thing is is that like it's very important to tell yourself what you want the end to be not how you're going to get there it's like it to use a really flawed analogy it's like i go to my father this isn't a real story i'm saying it's an analogy if you go to your father or your mother or your loved one and you say i am having these problems this is the solution i need here's what you need to do i need a new car i i need a car this will solve my problem and my dad says you don't need a new car you need a new house <laughs> new place to live new whatever and so he immediately sees reassesses my issue and tries to solve my problem from his perspective now he might be right or i might be right but now he is solving his problem he is solving my problem from his perspective and i'm asking for help on my perspective and and what never happens is us under so with the secret with intention don't worry about the path worry about the result what are you looking for do you if you need more money and more investors and more uh donate uh, donators That's not... i think it could be what's the word i'm looking for there contributors i think you're thinking of patrons but That's... donators could be a word sure yeah let's, let's roll with it <laughs> um if that's if, if your goal is bottom line, but then the ask you question is, why is that the goal is is money in the because in this particular case, more money wasn't going to save more spotted owls. More land was going to save. So there are ways to get land that aren't money. There, there's there's lots of ways to solve this problem. Yeah. So at the end, the intent needs to be is the idea to raise money or is the idea to save the warthog? It wasn't the warthog. <laughs> I don't even know that warthogs are endangered in any way. <laughs> I think they're doing okay, but who knows? Yeah. Um, is your goal people? People get so stuck on like I need to raise money. Why? I money as a result. I need to sell widgets. I need to. What is your goal here? What, what you're telling me here is we need to be working by traditional genie rules, which right. is once you make a wish, it's going to get twisted if you have not actually wished for what you need. Right. You know, you you can't. You've got to. You got to specify. Like I've always got people say, oh, I wish I was rich. And it's like, OK, you to what end? Why? Yeah. What What would being rich give you that you don't like that, have? That's the actual goal. And and maybe I wish I didn't have any bills is a very different. Diff I wish that I had no bills. 
is a remarkably different wish than I wish that I had unlimited money. Yeah. And you could say, well, no, they're not. They're the exact same. They're very much not. They're they're remarkably different. If you wanted a house, there's that guy that traded a paperclip for a house in right. the early Internet days. Um, there are so many ways to accomplish. So is the is the goal? I don't want to live on the streets anymore. Is the goal? I want a bigger house is the goal. And knowing those things are important. But it but what's where people get futzed up is they say, I want a bigger house. And that means I need a better job, which uh, which means I need or I need more money, which means I need a better job, which needs. And that's not true. You've you've laid out one path. But I back to the whole point of the the laws of intention and and like you said, the secret and, and goal setting. In all of our stories today, which are not nearly as all over the place, places they may have seen seemed, they all come back to this one thing of of sometimes spokes on a wheel are on opposite ends, pointing in opposite directions. And sometimes they're perpendicular and sometimes they're at weird angles, but they're always connected to the same hub and they're always a driving force in the same direction. Same goal. And so sometimes people, uh, but that's, what's important because as, as we have also learned that the wheel's not that special, the axle is the axle is what gets us. So it's okay to want revenue and it's okay to want engagement and it's okay to want awareness and it's okay to want all these things that seem to be at odd. As long as there's that North star metric, as long as there's that hub and that axle that is a driving force. Are you trying to raise money or are you trying to save the panda bear? I think that one is endangered. So I'm safe on that one. Um, <laughs> Is your goal to raise money or is it to save the panda? Is your goal to raise awareness or is it to save the panda? Is your goal to help or is it because saving the panda, it's very different to catch more mice than to get rid of mice. And and we have to be very clear on what our objective is, it, whether we're talking to a CEO, whether we're talking to the Girl Scouts that we're buying way too many cookies from like that one might not count. That one's pretty simple. Just yeah. oh. you, you, how much money do I have uh, translate true. to how many boxes, boxes can I afford? Yeah, they really don't like you haggling. I try. <laughs> I do not like that at all. The secret is cool, like you said, whether it's prayer or mysticism, but understanding what your goal is really, really can help coalesce all of these things that seem at odds. Because when you look at communication strategy, it looks a lot like spokes on a wheel and things are going all these ways in all these different directions. And it can seem really confusing and it can end up you buying the wrong gift for your girlfriend because you didn't factor in all of the things. But as long as it's centered on this hub, this single point, it it can make it. It it takes a lot of the guesswork out once you understand that North Star, that that pivot point that everything connects to. Well, it's a good lesson to uh, think about in this first week of January. And uh, know what you want 2021 to look like, or it's going to look like 2020 all over again. Yeah, well, that's putting a lot of weight on people's shoulders. So, <laughs> where should it be exactly, Jeff? Where should it be? We'll uh, we'll leave it there, and uh, we will see you back here next week on your favorite podcast reader, or on YouTube, or if you're exceptionally special, both. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us here at Release the Creative. Kirk here would never say it to your face, but he thinks you should like and subscribe to us on YouTube. And Jeff is far too shy to admit it, but he thinks you should subscribe to us on your favorite podcast reader. Yeah, well, you're the one who's always saying that everyone should give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Why do you have to make everything so difficult? <laughs>